posição, já tem toque ali atrás. Já tem toque ali atrás. Urubata Júnior, um dos envolvidos, nossa. É o Rodrigo Melo, carro do Rodrigo Melo, uma capotagem. Certamente teremos a intervenção. No início da reta de chegada. Olha aí, ó. Aí você já vê o carro já saindo. E ele acaba batendo no Urubatã porque ele perde completamente o controle numa velocidade muito alta. Você vira um primeiro toque ou se ele tentou abrir e nisso perdeu o controle. Eu imagino, olha só. A1 Grand Prix cars, but much, much faster now with newer tires, of course, and uh, much faster than Formula 2 around here. So off we go, Miguel's leading the field. From, oh, we've got a big accident on the start line already, a massive shunt. Oh, we've got a number of cars taken out. I just saw in the, as they came out there, Piscopo was collected there. Coletti, Grubmuller, Reed, Anidi, and Felipe, all those guys. We've got a red flag, red flag must be coming out. Yes, there it is, waving in the background. An enormous start line shunt. Oh my goodness, that was absolutely huge and they're already, Marshall's running out there to sort out the problem. This is the worst nightmare. Shunts at the start of Imola. How many times have we seen that? A lot of very, very badly damaged. Damage. So here's the replay of the start. The lights go out. Smith is stalled on the grid. Marshall. Oh. Actually, did he think he was clear? Did he think he was ahead I'm of him? I'm sure I'm going to have to look at that again, but um, on board here with Josh Kane who's behind, and he sees it, oh! One's gone right, he's gone left. Of shenanigans going on behind, and someone's tipped up in the air there! That's a big one! And that's gone a long way up. That's Kelvin Burt, as, as these two cars come together. And now they've got to come all back together again. Oh. Jason Bright over and over and up and into the wall. Oh! For the debris fence. This is Lee Holdsworth's view. Oh, that was the big crunch of the heat. So, okay, so he got hit by. Steer it down. So Jason's trying to make sure it doesn't turn onto its roof. It then catches the curb. And the curb then trips it over. So as it gets to that point there, it was always going to turn over. Must have picked up the front right wheel of Tander's car in order to be able to do that launch. And Tander's in the pit lane and has been there for a while now as well. So it'd be pretty fair old damage on that. It's this next whack with the wall, all this stuff looks spectacular. But at that stage, you know, it's not a crazy amount of damage. It's this next one where it hits the concrete wall. His tyre protected and then gets into the debris fence where they're going to have a big nightmare trying to resolve getting this car back in shape. Fortunately, where the where the massive load has actually taken place in terms of the final part of the crash, Neil, it was actually against the tyres there. That's taken some load away from that, and that's a ton it's and a half. Yeah, yeah, it's a ton and a half in the air there. It's just been tossed around like a toy car. I'm in the garage with Brad. The fighting points away they go, and a wheel spinning start from Andy Zuma. Oh, the yeah. huge contact. Timo Glock on pole and Andy Zuba second on the grid. Yellow flags wave. We've got two stallers as well. This is going to be a safety car, if not a red flag. Uh, but in front of uh, Adrian South. Oh, and another one. We are going to see a red flag, and that is a huge accident. That's Javier Fear, I think. So, uh, dramatic accident moments ago as Ernesto Viso barrel rolled over the wall. Over the top. To slide that car around. Oh, oh high bowler. Oh, oh, yeah. Breath. Oh, goodness me. That was never going to be good. That is a terrible, terrible image. Let's have a look at this, Andy. So, I follow is the red and yellow car there, out quite wide, and exits to the driver's left. Makes light contact with that guardrail. That was okay, but it was the way that the car was barrel rolling and made contact with the tray on the back of the ute that caused some concern for me when we initially saw it. This is I Fowler, he's out wide, he's on the marbles, he's trying to catch it. It wasn't, it didn't look like for me that there was any contact and it was that incident there that got the car up onto two wheels. The next contact with the guardrail then oh. continued that rotation. Thankfully it was towards the back of the car that it landed on the tray of that recovery ute parked there. We can report though that John Eifoller has been taken out of that car. He walked on his
zone with a little bit of help from Team Medical to the ambulance.